COVID, purgatory, and the crucifixion. What do these three things have in common? Find out with me in today's video. My friends, let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My friends, this is Alvaro, and my name is Alvaro, and this is a channel uniquely Mary. And tomorrow is the feast day of the birth of the Blessed Mother and we must celebrate. So I have a series of videos that I want to put out. I will be editing them a little bit less, not as many kind of cool things in there because lots of things that I want to share with not a lot of time. And today's the seventh, so it's the day before. And I really want to share some of these messages. By the way, if you want to support my channel, first of all, thank you to all of you who are my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your prayers, for your support in any way that you help me watch my videos, hit the like button, check out my stuff on Etsy. It's stuff I've designed myself. I'm not a professional, but I try my best. And then you can also check out my Patreon and pick different levels of monthly support. Whatever you can, at least pray for me and know that I am praying for you. One of the very few YouTube channels where that promise is given to you. So let's let's explore these three things and what the connection is because it's something that i've been thinking about for a while first of all one thing that all three of these have in common is we are utterly ignorant of just how much suffering there is involved putting away all politics putting away all of the stuff and all the talk that gets people angry do you know what it's like for someone to die of COVID. Now recently I've had a few friends that have had COVID for many weeks. Uh, this one person for many weeks who was in the hospital, who was uh, on the, the adoration group at our church. And then another person who had high fevers for 10 days and it got me thinking, what is it like to die of this disease? Well, I'm gonna put a link to an article in the description. And yes, maybe some of these articles are trying to promote fear in us, but we also have to hear them out and see what is it like for these poor people to die, even if it's a small percentage of the people that get COVID, even if it's 0.1% or 1% of people that die who get COVID, we still have to have compassion and understand. Just summarizing, these are some of the things that just gripped me. First of all, there's this utter loneliness because you're having to be isolated from everyone and maybe you have a spouse that can hold your hand. But aside from that, your kids, your family, no one can come in and see because of all the restrictions and all of that. So there's this tremendous isolation that is so utterly sad. And next, you know, it kind of grows as the disease gets worse. First, they maybe have lots of IVs, then they possibly start intubating you at that point, they may have you sedated. Um, then they, they start doing all these other intubations where they're taking IV fluid or blood or they're doing this or they're doing that. Um, before it gets to that point, however, the breathing feels very, very difficult. They describe it as breathing through a straw. People will say that it feels like their lungs are filled with bees being stung by them, like their lungs are on fire. And essentially, these people die of, you could call suffocation, or almost like drowning, which is, by the way, exactly the way that someone who is crucified dies. So I'm gonna to get to that a little bit later. So that's why I'm trying to make this connection. But in this article, this person goes through all the stages that someone would go through in dying, bit by bit. And as you read it, you just get this sense of dread. 
And also at some point, these people, because of some of the medication that they're on, they start having uh, mental issues, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. And this one article talked about how they have this sense of, of doom, almost thinking and saying, I know I'm gonna die. I know I'm gonna die. And they're just basically waiting for death to come and get them. And it's, it's really, truly terrible. And I think we don't really focus on this. We talk about the politics and the politicians and the masks and the vaccines. And this whole time we're forgetting the people that are suffering. And the question stands out to us, are we praying for them? Are we praying to be spiritually at their bedside? We have the Catholic faith and it would be hard for me and for you to die in that way. It would be extremely difficult. And we may not do it successfully. We may despair. Imagine these people that maybe don't have faith at all or aren't ready for this moment. And they have no preparation for the moment of death, the most important moment of your life where you face Jesus as your judge and you're not ready. Can you imagine what that's like? What do these people need? Well, we have two tools that we can offer them one is the Divine Mercy Chaplet. So uh, with the inspiration of a friend of mine, I've begun doing holy hours at the three o'clock hour. You can maybe take at least 15 minutes and pray for the people who are dying, especially of COVID, because all of the misunderstandings and probably mistakes medically that are being made and the increased suffering and the isolation along with that, these people need our prayers. And we must, out of compassion, help them through our prayers. So the first tool is Divine Mercy Chaplet. The second tool is St. Joseph. We are in the year of St. Joseph. And guess what? You know, he's the patron of a happy death. Nothing about the death of these people is happy at all. It seems like an utterly miserable end. And we can alleviate that because we have the tool of our faith. So place yourself on your knees before St. Joseph, begging for him to intercede for these people so that they can have some sense of God's mercy and peace. Obviously that they could be healed, but if that's not gonna happen, that at least they die with a sense of peace in their hearts and not loneliness, not fear, not isolation. But these people are sharing in the death of Jesus. That has been my entire thing that I've seen the whole time. They are being crucified as Jesus was. He died in much the same way with the nails through your hands and sometimes your wrist if it wasn't your hands and your, your feet, perhaps your ankles, excruciating pain. Your muscles are being torn. Um, muscle uh, Bones are being dislocated. It's difficult for you to breathe. You have to lift yourself up to breathe and you have to pull yourself by your nails. And then this fluid starts to come into your lungs because of the positioning and the difficulty in breathing to where you essentially die of asphyxiation or, or of drowning the same way that COVID people die. And then you're stripped naked, utterly humiliated in front of other people. And along with that, everyone has abandoned you because you're being punished and everyone's afraid that the same is gonna happen to you, including the, the followers of Jesus. So you're in that sense isolated and alone, which is something that the COVID people suffer from because they have to be covered with masks and everyone around them is covered up and, and, and all they're seeing is just like people with clothing. They don't even really see faces anymore. It's like they're totally dehumanized. Exactly what happened to Jesus. That's how Jesus suffered on the cross. And we should feel compassion for the people suffering from COVID and dying and compassion for Jesus and see the connection and let Jesus' death bring us to conversion and let the people dying of COVID bring us to our knees so that we can be filled with compassion. And kind of a bridge between these two are the souls in purgatory that I've made many videos about. Now, I, I wanna to read to you uh, this, this amazing story from this book called, it's just called Purgatory. And I think it's by Father um, FX Shoup. It's, it's an old book from, uh, from Tan Publishers, really awesome. You could check it out, you could buy it. I'll put a link to it below if, if you wanna check it out. So, so here it is, I want, I want you to hear it because it's an ama amazing, amazing story. And this is kind of telling us some of the sufferings that they have, especially the suffering of pain. 
because there's different types of suffering. They call this technically uh, the suffering of sense. There was in Northumberland a man named Drithelm, who with his family led a most Christian life. He fell sick and his malady increasing day by day, he was soon reduced to extremity and died, to the great desolation and grief of his wife and children. The latter passed the night in tears by their remains, but the following day before his internment, they saw him suddenly return to life arise and place himself in a sitting position. At this sight, they were seized with such fear that they all took flight with the exception of the wife who trembling remained alone with her risen husband. He reassured her immediately, fear not, he said, it is God who restores to me my life. He wishes to show in my person a man raised from the dead. I have yet, yet long to live upon earth, but my new life will be very different from the one I led heretofore. Then he arose full of health, went straight to the chapel or church of the place, and there remained long in prayer. He returned home only to take leave of those who had been dear to him upon earth, to whom he declared that he would live only to prepare himself for death and advise them to do likewise. Then having divided his property into three parts, he gave one to his children, another to his wife, and reserved the third to give in alms. When he had distributed all to the poor, he had reduced himself to extreme indigence, and he went, knocked at the door of a monastery, and begged the abbot to receive him as a penitent religious who would be a servant to all the others. The abbot gave him a retired cell which he occupied for the rest of his life. Three exercise di exercises divided his time, prayer, the hardest labor, and extraordinary penances. The most rigorous fast he accounted as nothing. In winter he was seen to plunge himself in frozen water and remain there for hours and hours in prayer while he recited the whole Psalter of David. He mort the mortified life of Drithelm, his downcast eyes, even his features, indicated a soul struck with fear of the judgments of God. He kept a perpetual silence, but on being pressed to relate for the edification of others what God had manifested to him after his death, he thus described his vision. On leaving my body, I was received by a benevolent person who took me under his guidance. His face was brilliant and he appeared surrounded with light. He arrived at a large, deep valley of immense extent, all fire on one side, all ice and snow on the other. On the one hand, braziers and cauldrons of flame, on the other, the most intense cold and the blast of a glacial wind. This mysterious valley was filled with innumerable souls, which tossed as by a furious tempest, threw themselves from one side to the other. When they could no longer endure the violence of the fire, they sought relief amidst the ice and snow, but finding only a new torture, they cast themselves again into the midst of the flames. I contemplated in stupor these continual vicissitudes of horrible torments, and as far as my sight could extend, I saw nothing but a multitude of souls which suffered without ever having repose. Their very aspect inspired me with fear. I thought at first that I saw hell, but my guide, who walked before me, turned to me and said, No, this is not as you think the hell of the reprobate. Do you know, he continued, what this place is? No, I answered. No, he resumed, that this valley where you see so much fire and so much ice is a place where the souls of those are punished who during the life have neglected to confess their sins and who have deferred their conversion to the end. Thanks to a special mercy of God, they have the happiness of sincerely repenting before death, of confessing and detesting their sins. This is why they are not damned, and on the great day of judgment will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Several of them will obtain their deliverance before that time by the merits of prayers, alms, and fast offered in their favor by the living, and especially in virtue of the holy sacrifice of the Mass offered for their relief. Such was the recital of Drithelm. When asked why he so rudely treated his body, why he plunged himself into frozen water, he replied that he had seen other torments and cold of another kind. If his brethren expressed astonishment that he could endure these extraordinary austerities, I have seen, said he, penances still more astonishing. To the day when it pleased God to call him to himself, he ceased not to afflict his body, and although broken down with age, he would accept no alleviation. Now, that story tells you of the intense suffering of purgatory, intense suffering of purgatory, and how much that man on returning for his own holiness, and he was probably suffering also on behalf of sinners, and especially the souls in purgatory, was bringing them alleviation. And so the question remains to us, how will you respond to these people's suffering, to those dying of COVID, to Jesus dying on the cross, to the souls in purgatory suffering constantly day and night without relief except for the hope that one day they will be with Jesus and Mary in heaven? Will you pray and be converted? 
Will you allow these sufferings to get you off your couch, off your nicely temperatured house, off your fancy electronic device, off your leather couched car, and your nice meat and chicken, and all these comforts that will one day be like something that speaks against us and testifies against us for excess of pleasure? Will you take on sufferings and prayers on behalf of these people out of love for Jesus to alleviate the souls in purgatory for the salvation of the people dying of COVID? My friends, it's the birthday of the Blessed Mother. Let us give her this gift. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.